Let's get right into it. Number 11. Hemispherectomy. Imagine doctors telling you they need to remove half your brain. Most people would be like, yeah, no thanks, I'm using that. But turns out, you can actually live with just half a brain. It's called a hemispherectomy, and it's usually done on kids with severe epilepsy that won't respond to medicine. The remaining half of their brain actually rewires itself to take over the missing half's jobs. It's like when your coworker calls in sick and you have to cover their shift, except it's your brain covering for itself. Scientists call this neuroplasticity. The younger the patient, the better this rewiring works. About 70% of patients become completely seizure-free after the surgery. Kids who've had this surgery can still learn, talk, and even go to school. Sure, they might have some weakness on one side of their body, but compared to having hundreds of seizures a day, that's a pretty good trade-off. So next time someone calls you half-brained, just remember that's technically a compliment. Because apparently, half a brain is all you really need. Number 10. Living with one lung. Your chest is like a garage with two parking spots. Each spot has a car. Those are your lungs. Now imagine one car breaks down and needs to be removed. When doctors remove a lung, something incredible happens. The remaining lung actually expands to fill up the empty space, like a balloon taking over an empty room. This is your body making sure you still get enough air. Your remaining lung becomes an overachiever, working overtime to keep you breathing. About 2,000 people get lung transplants each year in the U.S. alone. Many live with just one lung while waiting for a donor, and they can still do most normal activities. Sure, you won't be running marathons or climbing Mount Everest, but you can still walk, work, and even climb stairs. It's like running your phone on power-saving mode. You can do most things, just not all at once. Your heart actually shifts over to fill the empty space. It's like your organs are playing musical chairs in there. Number 9. Your stomach. Imagine doctors telling you they need to remove your entire stomach. Not just part of it, the whole thing. It's called a total gastrectomy. Doctors remove your stomach and connect your food pipe straight to your small intestine. It's like removing the middleman from your digestive system. Life without a stomach gets pretty weird, though. You can't just chug water anymore. It feels like it's stuck in your throat. Most people switch to thin juices or watered-down drinks instead. And forget about those big holiday meals. You have to eat like a bird. Six to eight tiny meals throughout the day. Your body's like a car without a fuel gauge. You have to remember to fill up even when you don't feel like it. You don't even feel hungry the same way anymore. Instead of stomach growls, you just feel empty. But people adapt pretty well. They learn to eat slowly, stay upright after meals, and plan their eating schedule like it's a military operation. At least they'll never get stomach aches again. Number 8. Living without a gallbladder. Your gallbladder is like that friend who only shows up when there's food involved. It's a tiny storage pouch that sits under your liver, holding bile until you need it. Think of it as nature's sauce packet dispenser for digesting fatty foods. But unlike losing a good friend, losing your gallbladder isn't that big of a deal. About 500,000 Americans get their gallbladder removed each year, sometimes because it's filled with stones, and not the pretty kind you'd want in jewelry. The record holder had over 23,500 gallstones removed. When doctors remove it, your liver just starts sending bile directly to your intestines. It's like switching from storing ketchup packets to having it on tap. The only downside is, you might need to watch your fatty food intake. No more eating an entire pizza by yourself, unless you want to spend quality time with your bathroom. Most people go home the same day after surgery. Your body adapts so well you might forget you ever had one. Number 7. The Palatine Tonsils Those two lumps at the back of your throat aren't just there to make you gag during checkups. They're your palatine tonsils, and they're like tiny security guards for your immune system. Think of them as spongy bouncers catching bacteria and viruses before they get into your body. But sometimes these bouncers cause more trouble than they're worth. They've got these little pockets called crypts that trap bacteria. Sometimes these trapped bits turn into tonsil stones, tiny smelly chunks that can give you dragon breath. It's like having a food trap in your throat that you can't clean. About 500,000 people get their tonsils removed each year in the U.S. alone. That's more people than the population of Miami getting their throat guards fired. And your body doesn't miss them much. It's like firing two security guards when you've got an entire army of immune cells anyway. Your other lymph nodes just pick up the slack. So if your doctor suggests taking them out, remember they're more like optional equipment than essential hardware. Number 6. The Spleen Your spleen sits under your ribs, filtering blood and fighting infections like a security guard who doubles as a janitor. But you can live without it. Your body's like, oh, spleen's gone. 
No worries, we've got backup systems. Your lymph nodes and bone marrow step up to handle the work. Sometimes when your spleen gets injured, it does something no other organ can do. It can actually spawn tiny backup spleens called splenunculi, like your body making spare parts. And about 1 in 10 people have these naturally. Living without a spleen means you need to be extra careful about infections. It's like running your immune system with one bouncer instead of two. You'll need some extra vaccines and maybe some emergency antibiotics. The ancient Greeks thought the spleen produced black bile that made people angry. That's why we still say someone is venting their spleen when they're mad. Turns out they were wrong, but hey, at least we got some cool phrases out of it. Number 5. Living without a thyroid. Your thyroid is like your body's thermostat, a tiny butterfly-shaped gland in your neck that controls everything from your metabolism to your energy levels. About 150,000 people get their thyroid removed each year in the U.S. alone, usually because it's trying to kill them with cancer. Living without a thyroid means taking a tiny pill every morning. The tricky part is getting the dose just right. Too much and you're bouncing off the walls like you've had 10 espressos. Too little and you feel like you're walking through maple syrup. But once doctors dial in your dose, life goes back to normal. Your body's like, oh, we're outsourcing hormone production now? Cool, I can work with that. Can't get thyroid cancer if you don't have a thyroid. Just don't forget your pills. Number 4. The fibula. Ever heard of the fibula? It's that skinny bone on the outside of your lower leg. Think of it as the backup dancer to the tibia's main performance. While the tibia does all the heavy lifting, the fibula just hangs out providing support and giving muscles something to grab onto. It's like the scaffolding on a building. Helpful, but not exactly load-bearing. Surgeons sometimes remove pieces of your fibula to use elsewhere in your body. Need a new jawbone? Fibula's got you covered. Got a complicated fracture somewhere else? Let's borrow some fibula. Your leg actually works fine without it. The tibia takes over most of the work, like nothing happened, but don't go kicking it just because you can live without it. There's a super sensitive nerve wrapped around the top of your fibula. One wrong bump and you'll feel like you've hit your funny bones angry cousin. Number 3. Living without a big toe. Your big toe isn't just there to stub on furniture at 3 a.m. It actually carries about 40% of your weight when you walk. It's like the team captain of your foot, leading the push off every time you take a step. But you can live without it. Your body's pretty good at adapting. The second and third toes actually bulk up over time to handle the extra work. Ancient Egyptians were way ahead of us on this one. They made wooden toe prosthetics over 3,000 years ago, complete with carved toenails. During the Vietnam War, some guys even tried shooting off their big toes to dodge the draft. Turns out missing a toe doesn't make you unfit for service. Your walking style might get choppy at first. Kind of like trying to walk in flippers, but permanently. But with some physical therapy and special shoes, most people get back to normal activities. So next time someone says, I'd give my big toe for that, remind them it's actually not the worst trade deal in history. Number 2. Appendix. Your appendix is like that weird roommate who doesn't pay rent but might actually be useful sometimes. It's this little worm-shaped pouch hanging off your large intestine, just chilling there. For years, doctors thought it was completely useless, just waiting to cause trouble. And when it does cause trouble, it's like having a tiny time bomb in your gut. Scientists now think it's like a safe house for good gut bacteria. When you get really sick and all your gut bacteria gets wiped out, your appendix might help restore them. It's like having a backup drive for your gut's operating system. But even with this potential use, you can totally live without it. About 7% of people will get appendicitis at some point in their life. Doctors just yank it out and send you on your way. No special diet needed. No lifestyle changes. Nothing. Your body's just like appendix who? Never heard of her. Number 1. Living with one kidney. So, you're born with two kidneys. But turns out that's just nature being extra careful. You only need one to live a perfectly normal life. Your kidneys are like nature's Brita filters, cleaning out all the nasty stuff from your blood. When you lose one kidney, the remaining one actually grows bigger to handle the extra work. Some people are born with just one kidney and don't find out until they're adults. Imagine going for an x-ray and the doctor's like, hey, where's your other kidney? Living with one kidney isn't that different from having two. You just need to be a bit careful with contact sports. No one wants to take a tackle to their last kidney and you might want to skip those crazy drinking contests. Think of it like having one phone charger left. You're going to take better care of it than when you had a spare. But other than that, you can live a totally normal life. That's all for today. I'll be making similar videos in the future. Subscribe to see them.